Uh, let's welcome in our uh, morning guest also at uh, this point of time. SP Prasad now joins us. Shrikant Shetty is uh, just uh, getting mic'd up. And Samit Chowan is also with us. Uh, SP, let's uh, start with you. Uh, you know, what are the picks first? And then we can discuss about a lot of stocks that could be interesting today. Good morning. I think this is a time when we have to wait and watch uh, Pankaj. First, I've got a bad throat, so you'll have to excuse me for that. Uh, I, I think all eyes or all ears... Uh, rather on uh, Janet Yellen and her team uh, tomorrow uh, evening, night, India time. I think that would be a, a, a major thing that one will look at. And of course, uh, the December data, uh, both in terms of uh, quarterly results as well as, well as volume data uh, in industries where volumes are declared. So till such time, you know, I think it's, it's a wait and watch policy is what I would suggest. And buy good quality stocks at declines. Uh, being knowing clearly well or consciously being aware that you have to have a, a at least a, a, a three or three odd year time horizon in whatever stocks you're buying uh, because um, that will really show us uh, what the impact of demonetization has been uh, in terms of quarterly top line and bottom line now at least though one swallow doesn't make a summer the number uh, indirect tax credit numbers do not look too bad uh, it's about eight percent net of uh, fuel uh, so in some, of course, covers the number that's been bandied about is 23% increase in November 2016 versus November 2015. But if you remove the impact of fuel, it's about eight odd percent, which is still not bad, uh, especially given that factory output has gone down by about a percent. So I would frankly wait for uh, how the October to December results pan out. If it means you're acquiring stocks at a slightly higher price, no problem, because there is also a sentiment issue that's happening right now in the market. So I would closely look at what Janet Yellen and her team have to say uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, and uh, we will also get a feel of uh, what is the president-elect's views on these things. Uh, so that's one. And second is the quarterly numbers and also the volume data on, on things like two-wheelers, cars, cement, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, Shrikant Shetty is also now with us. Shrikant, uh, first let's uh, talk about your picks. Yeah, if you look at the market conditions, as I said, I think it's, it's going to be uncertain time. It's, it is uncertain time. We are also going to wait and watch mode. Uh, so primarily, our uh, picks have been uh, essentially in sectors which are relatively insulated from uh, from the demonetization. So if you look at these are the sectors which are currently outperforming, uh, as the other consumption names, auto, cement, most of the consumption-driven plays or the financials will be affected due to demonetization. Uh, so given the uncertainty, I picked two stocks. One is CSC, which I think... Uh, looks attractive from a long-term perspective. Uh, we have valuation target of about 900 there. Um, the overall uh, uh, in, uh, business outlook remains pretty solid in terms of numbers. We expect improvement in numbers uh, going ahead. As I said, most of these picks are uh, going to be ones which are relatively unaffected by uh, demonetization. So whether in the power space, being in the power space, we think there's a space which is relatively unaffected uh, by the uh, overall scenario currently. So that's where uh, CAC uh, comes in. And we have fairly strong upsides there from a long-term perspective. That looks interesting. The second one is uh, Tech Mahindra. Again, uh, it's a sector which has been largely underperforming. Uh, and uh, that's where we like this stock. Uh, currently, valuations are attractive, which are about 12 times forward earnings. So that's a stock which we like. Uh, there are some sectors within, the, uh, which, within which it operates are showing signs of some traction. Uh, we're expecting some improvement in margins also. The most of the worst seems to be over there in terms of declining margin trends. Uh, so volume uh, improvement plus uh, some margin improvement uh, going ahead and uh, valuations are pretty comfortable at these levels. So unless there is some major U.S. visa issues or something like that which don't play out, I think there's a stock which could do well going ahead. So we have a target about 560 there. All right. So we've got picks from Shrikant Shetty and we also have Samit Chawat, equity technical analyst with Angel Broking with us. Samit, what are your top picks? Good morning. Uh, we have seen a decent recovery in the market in the last uh, couple of days. So we would maintain our positive uh, stance on the market despite the fact yesterday we saw a decent corrective move. Uh, Nifty has already confirmed its height of Harvard formation on daily chart. So as long as 8056 holds on a closing basis, we would maintain our optimistic view. And we expect uh, this bounce back rally to extend towards 8350-8360. So we would maintain our positive stance and hence uh, we have three buy calls. First one would be on Biocon. Uh, which has already confirmed its uh, breakout uh, uh, above its uh, resistance of 940. Yesterday we saw subdued movement, but we expect uh, this stock to move towards 980, stop loss 924. Our other buy would be on India Bulls real estate. 
the stock was clearly working the trend during yesterday session we saw a decent move uh, the stock has managed to close above its 20 day moving average thus going ahead we expect this stock to climb towards 78 stop loss 69 our third buy would be on tata motor dvr uh, on thursday we saw a good price volume breakout uh, after a consolidation of nearly 2 weeks uh, in last two days we have seen a decent dip uh, but we would uh, interpret this as a very good buying opportunity for a target of 324 and stop loss 288 and our solitary sell call would be on Amaraja batteries uh, which has already given a breakdown on early chart uh, during yesterday's session thus uh, we expect uh, weakness to continue 857 would be our target stop loss 927 right uh, sv how would uh, you look at the developments of on tata motors uh, there is a buy block deal which is happening today which is very unlike what happened so you know when actually i came to know about this i called up a couple of bankers and you know they found out back and they told me the way they sell uh, for their clients they can also buy for their clients so are you surprised by the deal uh yes and no uh yes at the speed with which uh, and the alacrity with which it's got done it's almost seemed like all of us were caught unawares with the demonetization of course that's in a lighter way i'm saying uh, so that that's clearly uh, one thing that the speed with which this has got done and n nobody in the market seemed to have a clue no because clearly uh, the impression one gets is that uh, tata's are leaving no unstone uh, stone unturned uh, in setting what they believe uh, a wrong right uh, no i'm not getting into a debate on uh, this whole battle that's going on uh, so i guess this is all part of the overall harmony uh, which the group is uh, clearly using so therefore i i, I was uh, surprised in some way not surprised in some way right uh, uh, shrikant how do you look at it uh, well, I think, see, uh, from a stock perspective, we like the stock at these levels. So I think uh, uh, somebody is, uh, I think, uh, uh, I, I'm not clearly aware of the entire uh, thing which has happened out now. I think it's a, it's a little new development. Um, but broadly, we do uh, like the stock at uh, this juncture. I think it's, one, again, one of the stock which probably will be literally insulated from the demonetization thing, um, given this global presence. JLR numbers have been literally good. So in that sense, uh, within the auto space, this, this remains one of the preferred pick in the current situations. Right. Uh, you know, the entire pharma sector will be in focus. So firstly, uh, what we can pick up on Sun Pharma from reports is that uh, US FDA, uh, in terms of the Halal facility, the Form 483 which got issued and made a lot of uh, headlines, is saying that some test programs were not adequately designed at Halal, which means that it's a procedural sort of a issue. No sense that, you know, there is any data integrity issue. So Sun Pharma will be in focus. US FDA, what we can pick up from reports at the Halal facility is saying that some test programs not adequately designed, but I've not seen the Form 483 so far. They generally make it public. Uh, so just let's wait for another day as well, you know, before you see these changes. Fortis Healthcare will be in focus. That's a news report that we're talking about. TPG, which is a well-known investor, is likely to pick up significant minority stake into Fortis Healthcare. What the report also says is it's likely to pick up from Singh Brothers. So not that there's going to be a dilution, but they're likely to, uh, to buy some stake uh, from uh, the Singh brothers, uh, which are of course the who are of course the owners of uh, Fortis Healthcare. Glenmark, we told you this yesterday that Zetia launch was expected on December 12th. So post market hours, what uh, the management has said is that they have launched the first and only generic version of Zetia into US. Remember, it's one of the biggest trucks that they have done. Annual sales of about 2.3 billion dollars. Uh, Glenmark is expected to get about uh, 500 odd million uh, from this particular truck. It's it's by far the biggest truck in the history that uh, Glenmark has launched yesterday. Uh, Sinjin, something that we are picking up from reports that fire has broke out at the lab in uh, Sinjin complex near Bangalore. Uh, now we are not sure about the impact. We are not sure about what uh, what is this changes uh, has happened. But Sinjin is the arm of Biocon. So let's just wait and watch as to how things develop. Markets don't react very positively to such news flows. But you know it's a lab. They have about nine to ten labs in that facility. So we'll just wait. You know from some comments to comment from the management as what is the extent of damage is it under control uh, you know what is the sort of loss that they would predict so that uh, all uh, would be quite important right uh, and some of the other stocks we are watching out for on news developments uh, knr construction is going x split in the ratio of five is to one uh, then uh, the, the government recently announced uh, SOPs for uh, digital transactions and a discount of 0.75% on fuel will start from tonight. So if you go to a petrol pump and you pay uh, uh, either through a card or uh, through Paytm or uh, make a digital transaction, you will get this discount. This discount will be credited into the buyer's account within three days time. 
then we have Axis Bank. Uh, it is proposing to raise 3,500 crore rupees uh, via bonds. And uh, that is something we'll watch out for how Axis Bank reacts. Uh, plus, uh, there are some other stocks also that we are watching out for, uh, which uh, includes uh, Bajaj Finance. Uh, Pankaj, uh, the management uh, address of Con Call, uh, what were they saying? So, you know, Anisha, yesterday they uploaded a presentation regarding uh, the effects of demonetization or one month into demonetization, what's been the sort of impact. The stock was already down 6% and yesterday uh, was the conference call. Uh, so, they have seen retail lenders' uh, inquiries drop by about 20-odd percent. Company is seeing slowdown in growth into certain segments. They are cautious against uh, high-end property loans that they are giving. Uh, but, however, they have also said that at this point of time, there is no need to go ahead and revise the 25% outlook that the company had earlier given. This is the pre-open price at the bottom of your screen, so it's already lost about 10%, assuming it would open about 820 uh, this uh, morning. So that's that's a stock to watch out for. All right, uh, so we'll keep a watch on those stocks. Uh, but let's go back to our guest, uh, Shrikant. Um, uh, what do you make of some of the bank stocks? Uh, they remain in focus uh, because of all the uh, demonetization news, but uh, some of the private banks have also uh, not seen a big traction and they up move. Uh, what's your view on Yes Bank, Indusind Bank, ICIC and Axis? See, overall, uh, see, from a long term perspective, we do like some of these names which you mentioned. Uh, yes Bank is one of our preferred picks there. Uh, we like ICIC Bank as well uh, among them. Uh, Indusind Bank is also a preferred pick. But I think in the interim, some of these banks are going to get impacted, like Indusind Bank has uh, large presence in the auto segment, uh, auto loan segment. So maybe there is some amount of you know, uh, credit growth getting impacted there. That could be a possibility. Uh, yes, Bank has uh, not indicated anything of that kind of slowdown as such. But on a broad basis, I think there can be some amount of slowdown in the credit growth because we're expecting uh, some slowdown in the business. So that is, a, that is a bigger impact, I think. And plus, there could be some cost-related impacts which would happen because of the kind of money flow which has come in. And, if, uh, uh, and on that... Uh, there could be negative carry for some period. So that is the, that is also the impact which should happen for banks. So I think near term, we are expecting volatility. I don't think there's too much downsides, but the upsides could be restricted in the near term. All right. So that's the view coming in on uh, some of the bank stocks. Uh, uh, Mr. Prasad, what do you do with some of the agri-related names? Uh, you know, there, there was a fear about uh, the impact of demonetization, but now looking ahead to uh, the Rabi sowing and the data that we're getting, uh, what do you do with uh, either an m and or Kaveri Seeds or Monsanto? No, clearly, uh, I had mentioned in one of the uh, earlier uh, uh, conversations I had on your channel that uh, I like M&M uh, because I think that's a stock, that's a company that has uh, really done um, a, a very good uh, infrastructure through uh, the, the rural area. So m and is a stock I like, and what you're mentioning is absolutely right in terms of what is the ground-level situation in terms of increased sowing, etc. Uh, appears that things are not all as uh, of concern as we thought. And similarly, on seeds and some funding the government has agreed to give, uh, I, I think Kaveri Seeds stand well for that. Uh, I think the block deal of Tata Motors has gone through, so it's about 50 million shares already traded at about uh, 472 is uh, the current price. So the block deal, I think, has gone through. 3% is uh, right now the premium that is paid. And you can just look at the volumes. It's 5 million shares. And, uh, you know, b by far, uh, this is the stock of the moment. Tata Motors DVR is also up around uh, 3 to 4 odd percent. Would not be surprised if they actually give up some of uh, their gains. Uh, Tata Motors DVR on your screen is up at about 305, 306. So probably, you know, these are the stocks to watch out for at this moment. Tata Motors, Tata Motors DVR, both these stocks have phenomenal volumes and also uh, they have seen a very, very big uh, block deal. Tata Power is up 0.6, followed by Wipro, Dr. Reddy's, Bharti Infratel. They are some of the other gainers. Not much in terms of losers as well. So Nifty is also flat. It's just about six points uh, here and there. So not much that, uh, you know, one would uh, read into uh, this. Uh, so that's, that's broadly... You know, the Tata stocks, or specifically Tata Motors, is what essentially is making in news. Apart from that, if I look at some of the other movers, so firstly, Tata Motors, Tata Motors, DVR are coming in at the top list. TVS Electronics, this is a stock we had pointed out yesterday as well. It's up around 5% uh, today as well. It's a beneficiary of, uh, 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 you know, uh, beneficiary of digital move is what uh, the street is predicting. 4% higher right now for this name. Uh, Jacob, that's a results impact. It's up around... Uh, 3 odd percent MEP infrastructure the management uh, will talk to us in about an hour's time or so that's also a name which is uh, doing very very well 
uh, from the Tata Group, even Indian Hotels right now is doing pretty well. So even that's a name which is uh, doing uh, particularly quite uh, well right now. That's also a name which is uh, doing well. Let's also look at Glenmark. So Glenmark is uh, about 0.6% uh, higher, 5 to 6 rupees higher at uh, this uh, moment. So that's a name uh, which is reacting to a launch. Bajaj Finance is now down 2.5%. Remember, it was down 6% yesterday as well. Uh, so it's, it's reacting uh, to, you know, probably... Uh, what sort of comments that uh, came into the con call uh, yesterday post market hours that happened but street already had got a sense that you know there seems to be a decline uh, Indian hotel is the top gainer Fortis is now picking up steam so we uh, told you about the news report which suggests that you know there could be some changes in terms of uh, uh, the shareholding over there it's up two and a half three percent IRB infrastructure is up one percent Tata Chemicals is uh, looking uh, on the positive side. Tata Communication is now also up around a percent or so. So most of these Tata names are actually popping up the chart. CESE, which one of our guests mentioned earlier, it's also a results impact, one would say, is up around a 0.75, 0.76%. So Tata Group stocks are in focus. Alchem is trying to bounce back. CESE is reacting to its numbers. Some of the other names like Bajaj Finance, which were down yesterday, continue to be down. Uh, Anisha, any volume names that you can pick up at this point of time? Well, uh, the Tata Motor twins are doing very well and now Tata Motors has seen uh, 50 million shares uh, uh, being uh, traded. Uh, of course, Rolta is continuing with its strong performance. Uh, it was locked in upper circuit uh, a day earlier after its earnings. It's up 5%. We've got Sunil Hightech continue with its good performance up 3%. Uh, we've got um, uh, some of the other stocks gaining. Uh, Suntech Realty, not on volumes, but uh, it also came out with its earnings. With that one's up 12%. Uh, we have uh, TVS Electronics. Uh, this was a uh, pick of one of our uh, guests a day earlier. That one's up 4%. Uh, Shipping Corporation of India is up 2%. And Nalco, <coughs> excuse me, also continues with its good run with a gain of 1.5%. Uh, on the losing end, uh, we are seeing Bajaj Finance look weak. Uh, Bank of Baroda is seeing some profit taking <coughs> down about a percent. And uh, Vedanta is also seeing some amount of profit taking. So basically, at this point of time, it looks like more even Steven uh, when it comes to the breadth of the market. But there are these specific stocks that are seeing action, including MEP Infra. That's a 5%. That also came out with its earnings. Right. MEP Infra, the management will be joining us in the next one hour uh, or so. Uh, SV, what do you do with Bajaj Finance? A great franchisee to own down about 20% from the highs. Would you want to buy? Selectively, yes. Uh, you know, uh, because the, as you said, the franchisee is very good. The promoters are excellent. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised, Pankaj, when we speak next week at the same time. Uh, the promoters have also picked up some stocks at lower prices because they've been consistently doing it uh, because they believe in the company. So they have been consistently doing it uh, whenever the prices have come down. They've consistently been doing it in terms of taking more than the allocation of rights issues. So I won't be surprised if they use this market opportunity uh, to pick up some stock from the market, which will send a huge uh, confidence booster as far as the market is concerned. This is a stock I like. I mentioned this in the past as well. Obviously, they've got uh, hit with this whole demonetization thing. Uh, other than the banks, if there's any NBFC which can withstand this, I will put Bajaj Finance right uh, among the top names uh, in being able to cope uh, through this, uh, navigate through this, uh, difficult uh, scenario uh, for the next few months. Right. Uh, Shrikant, uh, you know, uh, Motilal Oswal has an active coverage on Bajaj Finance. You know, from the con call, if the management says that we are getting prudent, we would want to wait and watch. It's actually much better than delaying the growth rather than, you know, to be sorry for giving in such an uncertain environment later. Yeah, I think if you broadly look at it, they seem fairly confident about the uh, growth. They have taken their own stance that they want to slow down a bit so that they don't land up in a difficult scenario later. So I think it's, it's been a prudent step which they've taken and um, I think overall business remains pretty good, very good and solid. So uh, temporary we all know that there are businesses which have got affected, consumer durable businesses have got affected, inquiries are slow in terms of loans, LAP is bound to get affected. So the, this, this is not something which, uh, which when the management says we become aware, this, this is a ground reality and I think everyone is aware of it. So there is some amount of slowdown in, the, in these uh, spaces. So it's bound to get impacted. Uh, the question uh, really is how long uh, this impact will be and the sooner we start feeling the uh, getting getting feelers that things are improving i think uh, the stocks will uh, uh, recover equally fast right but uh, till now uh, very attractive valuations or start to buy in a part manner if somebody wants to buy some stake start to buy in a part manner probably uh, because you can't, you can't say it's a very attractive valuation it's a good business it has always been a bit expensive uh, in terms of valuations 
and it will remain reasonably expensive. I don't think it will become very cheap uh, because uh, there are not too many businesses uh, like this which are available uh, uh, to buy into. So uh, clearly it's not going to become very cheap. But yes, these are uncertain times and so uh, you are getting a uh, stock at a reasonably corrected kind of price. If you look at uh, from, uh, from a correction point of view, I think 20-25% or even more uh, the stock is already corrected. Right. Um, Essie, but do you have a view on Fortis Healthcare? Now, uh, you know, this stock uh, uh, has not really given very good re uh, returns to its investors over the last six months. It's been only consolidating. Uh, do you think for a company which is into the bricks and mortars business, uh, it uh, offers a good investment pick? I think if one is at all looking at the pharma space, of course, healthcare is a, a little specialized line. But one looks at a larger drugs and pharma space, I think enough and more good names that are there uh, in the market. Uh, Pankaj mentioned about uh, Sun Pharma today, of course, in a different context and earlier as well. So I would much rather, frankly, look at the bigger pharma names uh, whose underlying business is very robust. Uh, stocks like Glenmark. You know, these are the stocks that I would uh, look at and use this decline to buy selectively and, and not buy whole hog, but, uh, you know, buy small amounts. Uh, rather than uh, looking at a name like Fortis Healthcare. I mean, this is not a name which uh, I've greatly been enthused about. I would much rather focused on uh, some of these better uh, pharma names. Right. Uh, Samit, do, do you have a view on, um, um, on Bharat Forge? Bharat Forge has seen a very good move over the last few sessions. Uh, do you think it's good for more? Some people have given even higher targets close to 1,000 a share. Do you think those levels are coming or should safe investors look to book profit? Sorry, I missed out the point. The question is about Bharat Forge. What levels are you watching out for on this counter? Uh, see, last week we saw a good uh, price volume breakout. After a long consolidation of nearly three months, uh, the stock has managed to surpass its uh, hurdle of 910, 920 on a uh, closing basis. Since then, we have been seeing strong move in the stock. The stock is now approaching its uh, strong re resistance of 980. But uh, if we look at the weekly, monthly chart, the uh, the chart structure is quite encouraging. And from here on, we expect it, uh, this stock to move towards uh, 1040, 1060, if you take probably one or two months time horizon. So any dip uh, in this stock is a very good buying opportunity. And the, the base now has been shifting higher from lower levels of 780. And now we are seeing a strong base somewhere around 860, 880. Right. Um, uh, you, uh... Shrikant, what's your view on uh, Kane India? Uh, we have seen crude oil prices move higher and um, the rally has translated into some of these uh, explorers also moving higher. Um, Kane India, ONGC, uh, even RIL to some extent, uh, they saw, saw some action in the first half of the day uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, what's your view on uh, some of these large explorers? Uh, clearly, I mean, the way uh, crude has moved and the way the developments have happened from the OPEC front, I think uh, uh, crude prices are bound to remain a bit more firmer than what they were earlier. So probably we're looking at a, a higher pricing kind of thing from 50 to $60 is a probably higher end of range. Uh, when earlier we were talking about 40 to probably 50 uh, now you're talking about 50 to $60. So that is the kind of range one you're looking at uh, from a medium term kind of perspective. So clearly that's better, that's positive for uh, oil, oil uh, producers. And there's been a space which has been underperforming kind of space uh, earlier. So I think there is scope for some more upsides there. Probably from a fair valuation point of view, probably ONGC uh, among the uh, larger explorers kind of thing or producers thing does look attractive. Uh, Shrikant, you mentioned CESC as among your top picks. Now yesterday they declared numbers. I was looking at the numbers. Numbers were good. Right? They were in line with estimates. Uh, considering that most of the capex heavy companies or power related companies have not given great numbers, in line numbers will lead to buying. That's what the call is. Uh, it's not a uh, call essentially on the numbers. Uh, I mean, we like the stock uh, uh, more from outlook perspective. Uh, we think the most of the investment phase is now over, and uh, we think the return phase is beginning there. Uh, so we see the stock performing going ahead. Uh, so a uh, lot of investments, if you look, I remember, a lot of uh, investments the company made into uh, in power, also into some unrelated kind of exposures, which they had uh, entered into, uh, into technology and all those things. So I think the broad amount of investments now is done. So we are looking at a return kind of perspective where return ratios are likely to improve over the next one, two years. And uh, in terms of valuations, the stock does look attractive. And as I said, in the current scenario, uh, you want to look at stocks where the valuations are pretty reasonable. The outlook is 
despite the environment where the companies could perform going ahead, uh, that's the kind of stocks which are looking at currently. Right. Uh, SP, uh, you know, HPCL, BPCL, IOC, you've always had a strong view on these names. They have corrected recently for two news. One is about the digital payment and the discounts that they would have to offer. And uh, the second is crude prices going up. Uh, but again, you know, these are short-term measures. Over a period of time, the companies will adjust to this. And you expect uh, them to, uh, again, start to do well? Uh, definitely. There's no question about it. Uh, because they've got excellent businesses. And uh, all these guys are also going downstream into petrochemical. Uh, BBCL has already done it in Cochin. Uh, uh, IOC, I think, is doing it in Paradeep. HPCL is looking at it in Vizag. So overall, one, one likes these uh, uh, stocks. I think the correction is a good time to look at, especially a stock like HPCL, because HPCL's uh, multiples are lower than uh, uh, the other counters uh, in, in this uh, space. So I, I, I continue to like these uh, stocks. And increasingly, with the subsidy element being reduced or brought down to zero, uh, the impact of subsidy on the bottom line of these companies and through bonds, etc., all those kind of things will slowly be a thing of the past. So net net, I think uh, this is a uh, part of an asset allocation. I think this is a good uh, a pack to have. Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what's happening with the oil play or, you know, how would you play, say, if oil prices were to remain at these levels or they were slightly higher, would you have any names to play the oil oil search except probably a Cane India or HOAC which produces oil? Frankly, among that pack, I would look at ONGC a lot more closely as, as you know, our colleague also just mentioned. Uh, because quality name, uh, government has a large holding. Uh, so therefore, I would frankly look at uh, ONGC among this pack uh, as compared to some of the other names that you uh, mentioned. Yes, clearly there's a space to look out for, but I think, uh, in a, not in a wrong way, but the joker in the pack is what's going to be uh, the new president's reaction, the new president-elect in the U.S., uh, what's going to be his reaction to what OPEC and, uh, OPEC and non-OPEC guys are trying to do uh, in terms of cartelization. Now, is he going to encourage more of shale gas? What is he going to do? Uh, I, I don't think he's really commented anything about this because uh, petrol prices and uh, the sentiments of American public uh, are directly proportional. Uh, so every time petrol prices go up, uh, there's a lot of disquiet among the American public because most of them use their own vehicles. So there's a lot of emotional connect as well. So I would uh, frankly have that word of caution when we look at oil prices moving north. Right. Uh, Shrikant, you know, you've liked uh, consumption names for a while, but something like a Pedalite, something like a Asian Paints, probably even the tyre stocks, they directly get impacted by prices of oil going, oil going up. Uh, would you be worried about the pricing pressure or, you know, it's a part and parcel of the game? I'm not worried about the pricing pressure. I think these are all franchises which have the ability to pass on the prices and they've, they've always done that. So, yes, the extent of margin increases which we've seen because of lower crude prices and the uh, raw mat prices coming down may be impacted because that margins may not be sustainable. So that's something, uh, though there could be slight tweaking or tweaking on that. But the bigger worry is, I think, the immediate consumption hit which is happening uh, in some of these sectors. So that's the reason why you would want to be cautious more on valuations front because these all these names, uh, be, whether it's Asian, uh, Pit Light, and these are fairly expensive, uh, have fairly expensive valuations. So maybe the outlook from a long-term perspective remains pretty solid, but near-term performance might be a bit uh, uh, might not come through. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, Sun Pharma, uh, the halal details that we are getting, SV, if most of them are procedural in nature, would it quantify for a buy or still, you know, you would wait for positive news flow to come in because it's still a heavy stock, it's still a stock which is cheaper than earlier, but, uh, you know, it's still sector-leading valuations. Uh, first caveat, which I would have mentioned uh, at the end of the program, but first caveat is I do have a very small holding in Sun Pharma. Having said that, I, I think one can't wait for everything to be discounted into the price. Uh, I would uh, look at buying this stock uh, on a selective basis, small, small amounts. But it's a solid stock. They've got a solid franchise. Uh, so, if, you know, um, given what you're saying in terms of more procedural uh, challenges rather than anything substantial, uh, I, I would look at uh, buying this stock at, at lower levels. It's come off a lot uh, from earlier. So, I, I would clearly look at uh, looking at this stock. I think this is one sector that is relatively less affected by the uh, threats to globalization compared to, let's say, IT. I've always uh, advocated that uh, pharma is the, is, is the story to play uh, when it comes to the uh, overseas market exports, globalization. So given that, uh, you know, th this is a, this is a, a topic and, and this is something that I would, this is my take on it. You know, one needs to look at uh, selectively in small lots, uh, look at buying Sun Pharma. Right. Uh, Samit, do you have a view on uh, the Nifty Bank? Uh, again, it's one of the biggest laggards today. 
and um, uh, any targets that you have and support levels. So, do you think uh, the banks will now stop underperforming or will that underperformance vis-a-vis -vis the Nifty continue? See, in the recent past, uh, the bank Nifty has uh, clearly underperformed. Uh, this uh, index has corrected quite sharply from higher levels of uh, 20,000, 20,300 in such a short span. Uh, however, since last three weeks, it's been consolidating around its strong support. So 18,000, 17,800 would be seen as a make or break level and it is seen as a very crucial support level for Bank Nifty. As of now, we have a view that uh, you know, Bank Nifty might hold this uh, strong support and we would first see a decent bounce towards 1,800, 1,900. Uh, but uh, we expect uh, underperformance to continue uh, with comparison to the uh, Nifty index. Uh, but 18,200, 18,000 seems to be a very strong support. So contradictory traders uh, can go long at current level uh, with a, keeping a strict stop loss below 18,000 on a closing basis. And we expect a decent bounce towards 18,800, 18,900. Right. Uh, Samit, have you had a look at some of the uh, mid-cap IT names? Uh, Rolta had a very good run a day earlier and it's continuing with its good performance. Any view on Rolta, Hexaware, any of these uh, mid-cap IT stocks? See, generally we don't track Rolta, but yesterday we saw a, a good 20% uh, surge in the stock. It was locked into an upper circuit uh, and today we are seeing a follow-up buying. Uh, this stock might continue its uh, upward momentum. Uh, if we look at the monthly chart, this stock has confirmed its uh, uh, double bottom kind of formation around its uh, support of 50. So at least in the near term, we would expect uh, this stock to continue its uh, this up move towards at least 75 to 78 levels. All right. Uh, today we're seeing some profit taking in uh, uh, the NBFC space as well. So Capital First, uh, uh, Bharat uh, Financial Inclusion, Manapun Finance, all of all of them seeing losses. Shrikant, um, for uh, NBFCs uh, and you know uh, in that subset, microfinance lenders. Uh, do you have any picks? Uh, would you look to buy any of these stocks? Yeah, we have recently interacted with some of these companies and I think uh, the ground level feel is that it's not as bad as it seems like. Uh, the price is obviously reacting a lot more. Uh, so we do like Bharat Financial in this space. I think that's something which uh, we think should do well. Uh, of course, in the, in the near term, there could be, uh, I think, collection-related issues, which, which we will come to know later. Uh, but broadly, on the ground level feel, which we have got from the management and the interactions, is that uh, things are not as bad as they seem to be. And... Uh, they should be back in back in uh, a reasonable growth business, uh, so that's what that's what the feel is. So I, I, we like uh, Bharat Financial in that space. All right, uh, Bharat Financial Inclusion is uh, NMFI Shikant Lives. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us at NDTV Profit and giving us your views on the markets and stocks that you like, uh, Mr. Prasad. Uh, before you go, can you give us your disclosures? Uh, Hindustan Petroleum and uh, HBCL and uh, Sun Pharma. Among the names that I mentioned, these are the stocks I have a small holding in both. Samit, your uh, disclosures? See, I don't have any personal holdings in the discussed stocks, uh, but our clients might be having positions. And Shikant, your disclosures? No personal holdings in any of the stocks which you discussed on, uh, but yes, my clients could be having positions in the stocks which you recommend. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on NDTV Profit today.